today we are here, Kaz, with this five dynamic, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain, you know, what they represent, but they represent girl power, and I'm so proud to have them on the show. They go by the name Brianna, Gabby, Ashley, Crystal, and Cheyenne. They make up the group called June's Diary. For those of you that don't know on the Afrozone show, June's Diary, a girl group formed by singer Kelly Rowland and my friend, celebrity choreographer Frank Gaxton. The group was formed from the reality TV series Chasing Destiny in 2016. Following from the TV series, the group released a buzz single, All of Us, followed now by their debut single, L-A-N-C-E. I don't know what Lance is, but they're going to tell us what that, what it stands for and what it represents. June's Diary, how far? <laughs> what's up? What's up? I was really glad, I'm really glad to have you all. Ladies, can you please uh, introduce yourselves uh, so our viewers can know who is who? So let's start with. Who's going first? Hey, y'all, I'm Ashley. Hi, I'm Bree. What's up, y'all? I'm Cheyenne. Hey, y'all, I'm Crystal. Like I said earlier on, welcome to the AfroZone show with your girl, Sheila. Oh, AfroZone, um, I like to reiterate, uh, is the first Afro beach on a major FM dial in the U.S., and it's also nationally syndicated. So um, the first time I heard about you guys was from the show Chasing uh, Destiny which uh, was put together by Kelly Rowland and of course, Frank Gaxton. I was privileged to go to Africa with Frank Gaxton. I booked him out there for a dance choreography session and he wouldn't just shut up about his girls. This <laughs> little, like he kept on going on like, you have to meet the queens, you have to meet the queens. So yes, thank you so much again, ladies, for coming on to the AfroZone show. Much respect. Thank you for having thank us. You. Yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you, we appreciate it. I want to get to what's going on right now. Um, I'm curious, like, how are y'all dealing with in your each individual cities? It's like as far as dealing with the COVID-19, and now we have a protest with just so much going on. Like, I'm just curious, could each one of you explain, like, what city you're in and just how you're dealing with it there? Mm-hmm. Um, this is Bree again. Hi. Um, originally, I'm from Trenton, New Jersey, but I live in Willingboro right now, which is another city in Jersey. Um, and it's just very real. My hometown, um, they were protesting. It started off as a, pre a peaceful protest, which most of them do start off as. And then it kind of turned into rioting and looting. And I think it's just an emotional time for our culture right now. Um, and it's something that I think is is needed like our voices need to get heard and i understand the emotion and what everybody is is going through and what we're going through as a people and i think we're all just trying to figure out how to get to the next level in terms of us as a black community being respected and being you know um, understood by everybody and i think that's what we're looking for right now um so i don't know it's just it's a hard time right now for us yeah uh -huh. I'm Ashley and I'm anybody else <laughs> I'm currently in South Central and the way that I've been dealing with it is uh, just staying home and doing what I can to support from afar because I'm very serious about my immune system I get sick a lot so this mm -hmm. pandemic has definitely put me in a place where I try to stay put and spend time with family and do things from home but also um, I've been donating. I have been uh, signing petitions. I've been sending out the information regarding protests as well as um, where you can help. And it's, it's like Bree said, it's just very surreal because it's been time and it's been an emotional, what, week? Ever, ever since he yeah. passed. It's been a very, very emotional week. And um, my brother, who is very, very, very passionate about black people who just got hired with Amazon driving trucks. And today was supposed to be his first day, but they called him off and said, we'd rather for you to be safe because they pulled some lady out of an Amazon truck yesterday and pretty much robbed the van. So at this point, I just want all African Americans, as well as people who are involved in protesting period, just to be safe, adhere to the curfew so we don't raise any problems and let's just work from home. Let's call these government officials. Yeah. Let's call the assemblymen and talk to the people who don't understand what's going on in regards to Black Lives Matter. Love it. Absolutely. Well, I'm Cheyenne. Um, I'm in Florida right now. I'm in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, and it's the same as Ashley. Um, just been staying home. We did a silent uh, protest thing yesterday in Tampa. Um, so that's really been it. Just trying to stay not too, too much into it because 
of everything that's going on, far as the virus and everything. Everything just happening too fast at one time. So we just want to make sure that our black, beautiful queens and kings are safe. And you know what I mean? And we all just stay safe as well. Your latest single, All of Us. We actually play that in Africa as well, even though we're here. We actually played out there. So what's the story behind that track? We all collaborated on it, but there was this this uh, lovely gentleman named uh, Lonnie Burrell and uh, a few of his partners who pretty much came up with the idea because I feel like everybody has the same sentiment. If you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. Mm-hmm. We put each other on the show and forcing ourselves to bond and, and, and really become sisters. I think that's what truly inspired the track. Like when we were recording, we were all together. We would ask questions about, okay, well, what do you like? What's this and what's that? Just getting to know each other. And I think it's become pretty much our anthem just because every time we perform somewhere, we perform that song, but you can see how much the lyrics ooze from our, our soul and from just being black women who really love and support each other and want to make this work as music, uh, music lovers in this industry, so. That's Lance's record. I had to yeah. come to it. <laughs> Love it. And I don't know if I should feel offended, but it was quite odd. See that? Maybe I'm telling on myself. <laughs> don't be telling. But uh, I'm just curious. It's like, do I dare ask the inspiration behind the, the Lance? And uh, for the people, can you explain the acronym of what Lance actually means? Lance. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think what around the time we released Lance, or I guess before we released Lance, we were kind of trying to be creative and think of like, okay, what kind of song do we want to put out? And we always, um, it's so funny that I have Erica Badu on my shirt because the song Tyrone like really resonated with us. And we wanted a song that had like a name. So that's kind of like where Lance was birthed. And I don't, can right. we, can you, I don't know if we can, can you say that on here? Can we say? You curse? Can you yeah. curse? It's okay. You can curse. Oh, okay. Okay. So Lance. <laughs> it's relevant. So, <laughs> Lance, it was a bop and it kind of, it, it literally means lying ass nigga cheating every day. And of course we know all of our men out there are not cheaters, but that song was like an anthem for women who are going through that. And it, it was kind of like empowering for us to give women something that they can I don't know. I feel like music is a release and it's something to help you cope when you're going through things. So that was kind of something that we wanted to put out that was creative. That was like, okay, like you don't have to deal with this. You're a queen. Like that was kind of the vibe of that song. And, I, I and no, it. no one was going through. <laughs> it wasn't based on a true story. It wasn't based on a true story at the moment, but I at think moment. at some point, I think most kind of goes women might want to go to one lance in their lifetime. Like, totally get it. There you go. Every lady probably has one lance in her lifetime. It might not be so lance. Felt it might be like, like uh, future or like, uh, <laughs> I'm just playing. That's my dog. That is. It. Okay, so what's the story uh, between uh, Kelly Rowland, someone I've, I've actually worked with? When you guys won the competition, were you all supposed to be in one group? Was she ever meant to be part of the group? And uh, do you guys have a relationship with her today? Um, she was never meant to be a part of the group. She was just uh, the, the creator, her and Frank Gatson. So they wanted to put together a girl group that would last for generations and generations just as Destiny's Child. And um, we, I think it was 2016 we were put together, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 2016 we were put together and she pretty much just gave us the go ahead to fly and be our own group. And I wanna see what you guys can do. So we talked to her every now and then, but for the most part, um, we've really been independent and trying to find our own place, trying to find our own sound and doing this all by ourselves because really that's how you develop your work ethic. That's how you really appreciate what you gain in the end is by working super, super hard. All those challenges that come along with it, we didn't want anything handed to us. We wanted to work super, super hard for everything that we have. And um, I can say that she's proud of us and we appreciate everything that she's imparted on us in terms of the, the lessons, the advice, the love that she's given us. So um, yeah, she wished us the best. So let me bring you guys back home to where I come from, okay? Come with me now. We're hey. going to Afro beats, okay? Let's go. My background, that's what I do. A little birdie told me that one of you has a big crush on Adekunle Gold. 
Who was the culprit? Put your hands up and tell me why. <laughs> innocent though, it's innocent because he's married and they're expecting a baby. So I just, I respect him so much. He's so talented, he's funny, and he represents Africa. And I just think it, his music is amazing. I'm glad you said that though, but I want to ask you, obviously you are, you are African. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, every black person is African, right. but you, you, you didn't grow up in Africa. So how did you learn about Adekunle Gold's kind of music? If you don't mind. Um, me I take, I take learning about other cultures and uh, other genres of music very seriously. There was a period where I went through this country phase. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a country artist. Um, there was a period where Selena was all I listened to. Mm -hmm. And I think with the rise of Afro beat music within the past five years has really resonated with me. And um, I talked to a few of my friends often from London. Their name is P2J and Ari Penn Smith. They're writers and they did a few songs for us, Good Times and Take, Take Me to the Island. And we were talking about artists that I should look up and they mentioned Adekunle Gold. And when I looked up his music, I was in love. Like my new favorite jam is Joy. So hey. I play that pretty much every day. Hey. 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 <laughs> oh, yes, yes. So, who would you guys would like? This is a, a show of collaborations. Yeah, we like to fuse it here because, as far as I'm concerned, the way Afrobeats is gonna stay number one, growing as a new genre of music, is by us all doing more collaborations. So, which Afrobeat artist would you guys, June's Diary, would like to have a collaboration with? Because they're watching. This show means a lot to the continent. So yes, yeah, so who would you like a collab with or who do you see yourselves collaborating with in the Afrobeat world? And don't forget the Afro-Caribbean as well, because we're one. Hey. Uh, mm. I want one, I'm gonna put you all to the test now, yeah, because we're playing your song in Africa, so we hey. need to know if it should be on rotational play or if we should just stop playing it. <laughs> hey, no pressure. Boy. No, no pressure. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna vote Burner Boy. Hey. Okay. Gang, gang. Okay. Good. All right. I think I'm in agreement with you, Bree. <laughs> <laughs> you see, she being smart now. She just think the same thing, but that's cool. Okay. Who else? Um, I, I would say Adekunle as well as Tiwa. I love Tiwa Savage. Tiwa Savage. Yeah. Am I saying his name right? Rema. Rema. Yes, Rema. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. He is fire. He is fire. He's hot. So any of these guys you guys don't mind the collaboration with, right? Oh, of course we not. Would love, we would love it. Mind. It's so many. So many. Plus, we need yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get to work. I'm going to get to work. I really, because as far as I'm concerned, you know, a good way to break into the African market, the African, which is a huge continent, is by having these collaborations. So I'm going to ask you now, we're just talking about Afro beats. Is there any Afro beat artists that you're feeling? Are you into the music Afro beats? You know who I really like is um um uh oh no what's his name World he is one of the greatest writers ever ever um I've been obsessed with him for a little while so he's probably he's probably my favorite in that realm. Oh my god! Can you say that again? Because he's gonna hear this. So just say that last part. You've been what? Say that no. again. Because he's gonna hear this. World, world, where you at? Like, wait, <laughs> <laughs> wait hold on. Hold on. See this, this is a whole different story. Like, let me <laughs> hello. He's talented. No, he is very, very talented. He is. Hey, Cass. What up? Uh, I'm just curious what's next for June's diary. Can I say that again? I lost you. Like, once the pandemic, it will have this is you lost me. Can you hear yeah. me? We good? Our new way of interviewing now, guys. We're sorry, so. It's okay. They say oh, this is the new norm. We got to get used no. to it. Because I was going to ask them, what are they going to do when everything gets back to normal? But I don't know what back to normal really is going to be. But, like, moving forward, I want to know, like, what's next for June's Diary? Any projects you got coming out? Any content you're working on? Like, what can we expect? And we were meant to perform at Essence Fest this year in about a month. And we were preparing our album. Like, we had all songs written by us. And we were working with these amazing producers, Kush and Obi one mm -hmm. So that's the focus. Just putting more music out, creating more music, creating our sound, and producing more content, videos, and being more present with the fans. It's just, Karonisha has made it hard for us. Boy, <laughs> 
We try right. to make it out, but that's always the focus. The music comes first. I want to know one last thing before I let you lovely ladies go and with your beautiful day. There is a disconnect with Africans and African Americans. There is. It's on, there's an undertone disconnect and there shouldn't be. If there's one advice that any one of you want, I, I, want, well, I want you all, to, each one of you to give an advice on how we can bridge the gap between Africans and African Americans. So what's your advice? Who's going to start first? Do you understand the question? Yeah. Um, do you agree with me? Do you, first of all, do you agree with me? Do you think there's a disconnect? Or I mean, let's start with that. Let's start with the basics. Then you I can personally disagree. I, when I was in elementary school, mm -hmm. um, I had a best friend. Her name was Ganalu, um, Ganalu Wanake, and she, I don't know, I've never experienced that. And even when I was in college, I went to Rutgers University in Newark, and that campus is like, that school in general is one of the most diverse schools in the country. And there were a lot of Africans on campus. Um, and I remember I participated in the African fashion show. Um, but aside from just certain cultural dis dis differences, I'm sorry, um, cause my family is Trinidadian and that's kind of the culture that I grew up with and my mother's African American. So just like the soul food and all that kind of stuff. But aside from like the food and the language, like I never felt, like I was treated any differently or like that I didn't belong or that it was, you know, that anybody was different, but that's just been my personal experience with it. But for people who may be feeling that or who may um, be going through that, I would just say communication is key and, you know, to try to learn and understand where people come from and what their culture is and what their food is and, you know, their languages and, the way they feel about certain things, but um, I, but like I said, I personally haven't experienced that. Okay, that's that's yeah, I, I appreciate that. Breaking up, Chris. Chris, breaking up. Chris. Chris, breaking up. Sorry, can y'all hear me? Mm-hmm. I was. Wait, you going to disconnect? Uh oh. My Wi-Fi says it's full. Um, can y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. In and yeah. out. I was just going to say if there's any uh, diff there's really no excuse with social media and the internet like if anybody has culture or the people it's literally a one click away so connect to me is really weird because everything is at our fingertips learning about other cultures is right at our fingertips our phone but i can see how um there would be a disconnect because of the in, in africa um but i don't think there's an excuse uh for anybody who has a question about the culture literally right in your hand yeah can I say something really quick? Yeah, go on, Gabby. Um, so my mom is full on African, uh, and that disconnect is very real. It's a hundred and Africa. What part of Africa is your mom from? Cameroon. Hey, what's that? Yeah. What's up? <laughs> She, you know, you, you can take the woman out of Africa, but she can never take Africa out of the woman. Like, let me tell you. Um, so I definitely grew up around, um, pure African culture. And so I got to witness like the real stark difference between Africans and African Americans. And there is, there, there really is this, this disconnect. Like there's this weird animosity that actually exists that maybe people don't want to address. And some people aren't really aware of it unless they really personally know like some African adults. Because I also think that a lot of a lot of the disconnect does come with adults. Like I don't see it. I don't see it much in the millennial culture. Like I don't. I don't see it too much, but I do see it with a lot of African adults. Um, and I don't. I mean, the the way that humans deal with differences, you know, it's it's been crazy since the beginning of time. And I don't even think that any of us have an answer of like how to fix it, other than people being open minded because there is such beauty in both cultures. And I think a lot of people focus on differences rather than focusing on how much we really do have in common. Um, 
And, you know, one thing with my mom, too, because my mom, because my mom is like that. Like, my mom is really like that, you know? So I experience it in my mom, too. <laughs> <laughs> and so I know that that exists, but I don't even know how to tell her, like, mom, chill, it's okay. Like, we're really all alike, you know? Um, but it's, it's, it's really like Bree said, like, trying to be open-minded about learning about cultures and trying to just let your guard down and realize that we all kind of do come from the same place. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't even, I really don't even know if I have an answer of like how to fix it. I just knew I needed to chime in because I was like, oh, it exists. My mom's one of them. It's real, like for sure it's real, it's real. Um, and I never really, I never really completely understood it. Um, but, but like Bree said, and I'm repeating it again, like be as open-minded as possible. Like I feel like that's the only way to really fix it. Easier said than done, but I really do feel like that is the answer. <laughs> yeah. The most important thing is we talk about it. It's like that elephant in the room that nobody wants to address. You mm -hmm. know, I, I was born in Nigeria. I grew up in London and now I live in Chicago. So I have been raised by three different continents and I've kind of seen it all in my, in my years of growing up as a, a major player in the entertainment industry. You know, and I do see that disconnect, but I, I do agree with you all in the sense that it's really with the older generation and we have to be careful and mindful mm -hmm. don't pass it down to us. Because, like Bree says in her class, she had a friend that she could not tell the difference. Like, okay, African society, you're dancing. Okay, let's go. I'm going to join you all. Like, you know, the spirit, your heart is open. And we want to make sure it stays like that. That's only we can make a change. You know, that's only we can make a change. Like, what's happening today in the world? We've all tried the nice marching. We've tried it all. So now this generation is like, oh, come on now, we ain't doing that. What? A Allow it. Like, no. Right. Don't burn things down. Doesn't make it right, but... You just have to keep trying because we won. That's my take on that. So, yeah. Okay, well, we uh, still on the disconnect. I definitely have had a major disconnect. Uh, I didn't realize that, but it was really more so, of, I don't know if it was my ignorance of just growing up not around the culture. I didn't see much representation growing up on TV or whatever I was, where I grew up was, you know, there wasn't no community. So prior to meeting you, I didn't know, you exposed me to a lot, like going to Africa and seeing just how, just as much as we're different as like how similar we are. And uh, I think an easy way or a way to get it started is what you're doing. I think through the arts and through the music. If you notice through like sports and music, they bring cultures together. And uh, that's why I like your whole ideology of just bridging the gap between the hip hop beats and uh, I mean hip hop and Afro beats and just using it because in the process of me listening, like, oh, who is Davey though? He linked up with Drake. Okay, this is a vibe. Mm -hmm. Oh, this yeah. one getting that way from what's going on over here. So it's like it makes me want to tap into the culture. And it's like, and, and that's so my disconnect wasn't as far as in the negative thing, it's just not knowing, not having this representation, not having these conversations, and just not realizing the things we have in similar are like the arts and the culture within itself. So I want to salute you for what you're doing and just let you know that I was very ignorant to the African culture prior to this. And I'm still learning. And I think it's super dope. I think we all need to tap in in some type of way. Now, whichever way works for you. But for me, it's been through the music. So I salute you and any other artist that's doing that, that's collabing and really uh, bringing awareness to whatever. Salute you too, Kaz. We're going to go find you an African wife now. Say no more. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, you want to say something? I got to sew my royal oats. Hey, no, I was just gonna piggyback in off of pretty much everybody. When I was in middle school and high school and college, I went to UC Berkeley and I had a lot of friends, mostly Nigerian, but both of my exes are African and I've, I've pretty much lived with their families in times of, you know, celebration. But a lot of my friends have expressed that their parents is generational. Their parents don't necessarily uh, agree with a lot of the customs that we as African Americans have so I've experienced it firsthand and at one point one of my friends who actually committed suicide um, he was Sierra Leonean um, it had a lot to do with us feeling entitled as Americans and I'm pretty sure we can dive deep into it even further but once they got to know most of his friends who were African American we would come over for parties we would talk to his parents about what they experienced in Africa um, we would talk to his parents about the generational ancestry and how beautiful and rich the culture is. And like Bree and Gabby said, it's just about communication. It's about um, bridging that gap through conversation. 
And I think what's going on right now is a very, very key. It's so key because a lot of people are finding out things that they didn't know before. A lot of people are uh, witnessing unity that they have never seen before. I saw the Amish supporting the, the protest the other day. I saw witches supporting the protest the other day. And I see so much unity. And I think we just have to continue to do this and, and be present for one another and continue to ask questions and, and educate ourselves beyond just standing in front of policemen and saying Black Lives Matter or even beyond that. I just think that we all just need to communicate with one another and be open-minded like Gabby and Bree said. It's just, it's simple. Yeah. I think it's simple. You and I, T.Y. Hey. I love <laughs> you all. You guys are just the truth. Yes, I love you all. Thank you so much for being on this show. We are big fans of you, us. big supporters of yours. I would love to take you to Africa. I know Frank Gaxon has been on me for that. I would love to do that, take you guys to the motherland. I want to know by show of hands, who would like to come with me? Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Diary. Please keep putting out those hits. Keep sending us the music. We're going to keep playing it. We're going to keep supporting you. We're going to make sure those streams count because we don't know when next will be a live show. We don't know till they get that vaccination, but we can play the hell out of your dope music. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you.